Welcome in to episode 277 of the Source Say Podcast, your go-to Kentucky basketball and recruiting podcast on the growing KSR Podcast Network, presented by Justice Dental. Today's show is an all-timer featuring an all-timer. The point god himself, Tyler Eulis, joins the show. He gives his thoughts on the current Wildcats, his transition to coaching under John Calipari, all that good stuff. It's a must-see. You do not want to miss that one, Sean. We had an absolute blast uh, talking to in my opinion, the best point guard in Kentucky basketball history. We ask him that question here later in the show. But before we get started, a very quick message from our friends at Justice Dental. Sources say is presented by the great team at Justice Dental. Visit one of their two Lexington locations by scheduling an appointment online at justicedental.com or by calling or texting 859-543-0700. Dr. Thompson, Dr. Justice, and their team look forward to seeing you soon. I'm your host, Jack Pilgrim of Kentucky Sports Radio. Very happy to be joined once again by the one and only Sean Smith of Go Big Blue Country. Sean, how the heck are you? I am fantastic, Jack Pilgrim. Definitely excited about this episode. And uh, Tyler Ulis, a fan favorite through and through, BBN. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming from him on this one. Uh, I have been very outspoken about my love and I guess just respect for Tyler Ulis as a basketball player. Not ha- having nothing to do with his height, nothing to do with, you know, just the, the physical circumstances behind you know his greatness but uh, just his his intelligence high basketball IQ John Calipari saying he's an extensive the, he was an extension of the coaching staff during his time in Lexington and uh, just the value that brought to that team and, and just how in- incredible that th- his first team in 2014-15 all of the kind of uh, madness that went into that him and Devin Booker coming in together uh, and then him kind of taking over the reins in year two as a sophomore to become one of the best point guards and uh, nationally that you're the best point guard nationally but uh, just how he stood up in, in the all-time ranks at Kentucky we, we talk about all that good stuff but uh, I, he is somebody I've always had a lot of respect for and that only grew after talking to him today on today's show Oh yeah, he's he's unreal. And uh, going back to his playing days at Kentucky, we we talk about it. And it's it's actually hard to believe it's been as long as it has been, uh, going back and and reflecting on that time. But you're talking about a a great floor leader, a great leader in the locker room, a, a scorer, a uh, defender. Like I mean, he was a, a really really good defender. Like just across the board, just a, a great former Wildcat, an all time great. And uh, the impact that he's making now on this current program and this current roster. We talk about that too, and there's just so many things that he does and is doing that that helps John Calipari and his program out. And he also has a different perspective of just how difficult it is to be a head coach or a coach at Kentucky that you don't see when you're playing. Yeah, and it's not all positive. It's not all. It, it, he shared some pretty intimate details about uh, his near death experience with with the the car wreck and and how we almost lost an all timer, you know, that, that it was a very real moment. He even said, it's like, yeah, I guess I really haven't gotten the chance to talk about this in the past. And, um, you know, he opens up about it and talks about how, you know, he, ha- it was traumatic and how he's still not kind of okay. And he wants to play basketball again, but it's also one of those things that, you know, he knows he has physical limitations injury wise. And it, it really, uh, it really kind of set him back mentally beyond just the physical limitations as well. So uh, we, we really get to see a, ty- a side of Tyler that I don't think uh, many have gotten a chance to see. So that, that part is uh, just really cool. Really looking forward to uh, sharing that experience with uh, the, the fans. You guys are going to love this interview and uh, very, very much looking forward to that. Uh, Sean, before we get to that conversation, uh, I, I have a little bit of crow to eat. I talked a big game. I said that I was going for a three-peat inside Rupp Arena, and I was not able to make that happen. I am, I, I didn't embarrass myself. I, I played okay, but the team effort, buddy, it was just not it. It was just not it. We went 0-4, didn't win a single game, lost every game by double digits, Um it, it was rough. You got to see you got to see loss number one, but you didn't see what transpired after the fact on on days two and three. Uh, and uh, the, the coaching staff, the current coaching staff on the on the uh, Kentucky bench, they they had a, a lot of fun making fun of me for it. Well, I spent I spent Friday evening with you, and I, and I watched that game, and and you had a good effort. Like for the the opportunities that you were given, you you cashed in. Unfortunately, your team overall did not, and was at a disadvantage in. Uh, a few areas on the floor, but you yourself made one of the best, most beautiful backdoor passes that I'd seen on the Rupp Arena floor ever. 
and great. I mean, it, you ran some get action. You did some screen and rescreen. You did a lot of things that really made my basketball mind uh, take off. And I'm like, man, look at Jack Pilgrim out here. MVP on the floor. You uh, you looked good in that jersey, number 48 up there. I mean, it just uh, – you showed your talent, unfortunately. You did not leave a winner. I did not hear from you at all on Saturday, which told me Saturday must have been really bad. And then it was early Sunday morning. You chime in. You said, well, playing the one seed this morning. We'll see how this goes. And then I didn't hear from you again until I saw you at Oscars camp in the afternoon, which told me you went 0 for 4. So Bruiser Flint pulled me to the side. Uh, and, you know, it was just being tr- totally transparent. He pulled me to the side and was like, you guys spend a lot of time talking a, a big game about us and-, and critiquing us and, you know, saying good things about us, but also dissecting what we do, both good and bad. And he said, we're watching you now we, we get to return the favor on your end let's see what happens and i asked him after uh another loss that we took i said well let it rip what did uh wh- what did you think and he and he teased me for not diving on a loose ball um uh, it was one that i probably i, I probably could have gotten but look it was a personal decision on my part we were down by 15 at the time we were already 0 and three and it was one of those deals been where it was an like injury that ended the weekend for someone there early it, it was one of those deals where it was like am I am I gonna make a winning play when we're not winning this game it was, it was a selfish part on my part I, I apologize for it but Bruiser Flint did go out of his way to say yeah, there was a very clear loose ball that you could have had and you know Chuck Martin said that uh, my lateral quickness need to get a little bit better my, my on ball defense was struggling a little bit so they had their fun I I played okay not great I, I, I but but training starts today Sean I I, I am coming back for vengeance it was it was a, a shot in the the just the absolute heart to watch somebody else climb that ladder and cut down the nets uh, and on my ladder when I won back-to-back the years before. I, it's just unacceptable performance. 0-4 oh, oh, oh is just – it's a no-go. I'm not trying to pile on here either, but you actually went 0-5 oh last week. What do you mean? The exhibition? The Listen, What do you guys. mean? Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't count. <laughs> That doesn't count. I got cheated on that. That doesn't count. <laughs> that, that doesn't count. But our listeners Any, need to go watch that episode of List of Cuffs, though, and check it out on the KSR YouTube channel. It's still up there. Yeah. What, what, whatever. Don't don't watch that. <laughs> Do watch it because it was a great finish. Uh, I, I took great pleasure in beating you in the movie category, but uh, unfortunately, the uh, basketball category that we actually like get paid to talk about, <laughs> I crumbled miserably. So that 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 was just a, a big big old disaster. But that is not what. We're here for. We're not here to talk about uh, individual experience on my part and my shortcomings on the basketball floor. However, the, it was a really revealing weekend. Uh, just being around the team, being around the program, being around the coaching staff, seeing their day to day operation up close and personal, and I just gained a whole heck of a lot of respect for what's going on right now with that team. Uh, and you got to see it up close and personal on Friday as well. Uh, the camaraderie. The chemistry, the these guys clearly get it, and their ability to talk to you know it's one of those like uh, mindset of how do you treat the janitor to type you know you you can tell somebody's character by how they how they treat a janitor how they treat a uh, you know a construction worker whatever it, it, it's not how you treat somebody in your same field but it's somebody that uh, and the way they were treating everybody with equal respect, talking to the kids, getting down on their level, shaking hands, high five and running and yelling and going. I mean, it was so refreshing to see how close and cohesive this group was. Uh, and you, there, there was a real sense of optimism about just what this team is and what their potential is as, as a real title contender, just based on how, how they operate. I, I, I felt at least, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. And, and going back to the camp with you on Friday, and being there at Rupp Arena and watching you play and just seeing how active the guys were engaging with you all. It'd be easy for these guys to kind of just sit back and be like, you know, I'm, I'm required to be here. I'm supposed to be here. Let's just get this over with. No, like DJ Wagner was up and active in huddles, actually coaching, like trying to help his team to victory. Aaron Bradshaw, Reed Shepard was one of your coaches, Rob Dillingham. But then you go to Oscars camp on Sunday and you got to see those same personalities. Aaron Bradshaw 
listen, unreal. Nobody close. With, no, nobody, nobody close. Nobody compared to him and how engaging he was with the kids. He he was the guest official for Oscar Sheboy's one-on-ones with campers, and Oscar would have had the pro camp's record for block shots, but Aaron made sure to keep calling fouls, called a technical, and, and everything else. And just you get to see the personality – and just he he's so funny. Jordan Burks was messing with me the entire time when we were taking a picture with the team. Like just overall, the entire group, it was a win win and you're getting to see just how lockable this group is, but not just how lockable, but how much they like one another. And that's a key to just getting this that's getting off the ground to start the season. You get to that point, you've already won half the battle. Yeah. It- just being around them and, and talking to random staffers and guys, you know, not just people at the top, the, the main coaches, but just, you know, the, the the other shakers and movers inside the program, they will all tell you the exact same thing. Aaron Bradshaw is as real as it gets as a human being, an awesome, awesome kid who genuinely wants to be here. And above all else, yes, everybody saw him wearing that boot. He was wearing a boot every time I saw him this weekend. It does not matter. Everybody I talked to said that he is dying to get that thing off that he has like the way people talk about Aaron Bradshaw is like he's very close to getting back on the floor right now to to playing competitive basketball the issue is they don't want to rush a seven footer back unnecessarily for something that amounts to you know what would what would getting him back for a shoot around or a, a workout right now do for him long term it means nothing he is very close to being back on the floor but there's just way too much to risk to take that boot off and and take that one last safety measure keeping him uh, keeping him safe. There's no reason to rush him back. He's going to play. It, the, ignore the boot. Ignore uh, the the other noise. Aaron Bradshaw will play. He's going to play for the University of Kentucky. I had somebody say I would bet a hundred thousand dollars that Aaron Bradshaw plays for the University of Kentucky on on night one. Like they they are there is so much unbelievable confidence inside that program that Aaron Bradshaw is. A, going to play, but also B, going to be pretty damn good too. Yep, November 6th, that's the goal, right? You get him out there for that opening game at Rupp Arena. Uh, well, the exhibitions too, whenever those are, are scheduled out and, and sent out. But that's what you're aiming for. It's not about August. It's about getting him ready to go in November. And you still got some time here. Official practice is still a month or so away. You, that's when you want those guys being able to go full go. You don't want to bring somebody back too soon and then have a setback that then pushes you into December or January. That's where it gets a little dicey and tricky, especially when you're working and trying to get build some chemistry and, and figure out your roles on a team. It's tough to figure out a role in January after you've already had guys kind of find their footing for two or three months prior to that. You just want to be at full go when it matters, and I think that is definitely the plan. And, and Jack, it seems like that that's what they're on track to do. And, uh, man, this team adding – two seven-footers, well, technically three, to the mix that we did not get to see up in Toronto with what we did see in Toronto. It has everybody excited. John Calipari is even excited, which we'll talk about in a moment. Just a lot of excitement around the the basketball program right now for good reason. And I was there in the locker room with, uh, you know, the the new new nameplates around the room. Everybody that you'd expect to see, including new Big Z, uh, sitting there at Visage, number 44, seven foot two, out of Croatia. Everybody wants to know what's the, the latest with him. Uh, several conversations about Big Z, and, and if you were on our KSR, uh, KS board, KSR Plus, you already know this, that uh, the expectation is that, that Big Z is supposed to be here this week. Uh, Academics are looking good. The pro uh, eligibility, you know, the amateurism stuff is looking very good. The only there, there's only been one snag, and it's a um, basically like a, a language class that you have to take uh, to basically certify yourself before enrolling in college. It's a it's a super seamless transition. Nobody uh, is really uh, expecting it to create any you know serious snags in, in getting him over here. I guess the only real holdup in, in I guess slight level of concern is just the add drop date for uh for, for fall classes you just got to get him here for fall class to get that thing rolling but uh i i didn't talk to a single person around the program that didn't think that big z was going to be here yeah. and the expectation was that he was coming in this week so um i don't think there's a specific day yet should he as by the time people listen to this he very well uh, may be on his way right now but there's a lot of optimism about big z showing up being eligible being good to go i was there 
next to his locker and saw it with my own two eyes. I posted on the website today and uh, previously posted on KS, KS Board. Uh, they, they are very anxiously awaiting uh, Big Z's arrival. There's a lot of optimism about uh, him getting here and, and him being pretty good for us. Yeah, and him mixing right in with this group of guys that, that Kentucky's had here for a few months. And as easily as these new faces kind of blended in, we expect Big Z to do the exact same thing and get him here, give him two or three months to get used to these guys, and then let's get, let's get this thing going here in about, well, how many days? I think John, our buddy John Rothstein put it up today. Is it 69 days until college basketball? And I know college football kicks off this weekend, but once that happens, college basketball's uh, not too far behind. Yeah, very much looking forward to that. Source Say Podcast is brought to you by Andy Ludicky and MyPerfectFranchise.net. Are you ready to leave the corporate rat race for the American dream? Looking for a side hustle while working your current job, wanting to diversify, build wealth, and or leave a legacy? Andy can help. Andy's a franchise consultant as well as franchise owner and helps people find franchises that fit their skill sets, financial requirements, time to commit, and more. His services are 100% free and he is here to help. If you have any questions about business ownership, you can learn more and contact Andy anytime at www.myperfectfranchise.net. Uh, Sean, we got an appearance from John Calipari today. Uh, he joined Sports Center today for a little 10 minute segment where he talked about this team and the uh, the message that he relayed to uh, the, the anchor for Sports Center is exactly what he said. Uh, I got a all the players got a at Fantasy Camp got a private tour of Cal's office and it was kind of like a meet and greet thing where uh, you got to mingle with him. He answered some questions from the fans and uh, he talked about this team. He talked about his excitement. He said, every national title contending team needs three dudes, three guys who can go get you a bucket in March. And he goes on Sports Center and says basically the same thing. He said, March is separated by dudes and guys who are not dudes. Um, he also brought up uh, in, in our little meet and greet that, that uh, all of his best teams, all of his final four teams in the past have had elite rim protection. Goes on Sports Center and says the exact same thing. Says he has that on this roster. Obviously, Big Z, Aaron Bradshaw, Ugon Onyenso, and even Trey Mitchell to a lesser extent. Uh, those were the two big takeaways for me, Sean. Uh, that he that that's you know he's pretty confident. He's saying that both behind the scenes privately at little meet and greets at fantasy camp, but he's also saying that in you know worldwide leader of sports on on Sports Center. Yeah, and I think that was the thing that we were looking for. Right is. Would the things that Cal said in Toronto a month or so ago change between now and October? Today, it did not change. It's all the same stuff. You talked about Trey Mitchell. You're going to hear a lot more love about Trey Mitchell on this show here in a little bit and, and talks about how he fits with the roster and how he stands out with offensively and the things Kentucky can do. But a, a couple of things that stood out to me was just him going back onto Sports Center. It, it felt like it had been a while since Cal had really taken – control of that moment and, and been in the spotlight talking about his program. Here it is the start of the college football season this weekend, kicking off week one and John Calipari's face is on ESPN talking about Kentucky basketball. Kentucky basketball was being talked about just a few weeks ago in, in Canada. Like it, they're back in the news and it's all positive PR for your program. But he said a couple of things that stood out to me, that word random basketball that me and you have talked about so much on this show. We talked about it when we hosted KSR in July what does that mean? We talk about that with Tyler on this episode tonight. That was something that stepped to me. And then playing in space. He mentioned you can have sets, you can run plays, but we're going to play in space. We have the guys that can play in space. Those are the things that get me excited about this season because it's, it goes hand in hand with what we saw and what he said leaving Canada. And he's still on that same note. Nothing has changed even adding the bigs, he's still talking the same way he was talking without them. That's the part that I took away the most was the basketball talk and that little brief moment of him saying those things. And I liked how quickly he, you know, the, the anchor said, well, you guys haven't won, you know, been to the final four in a while, you know, been 2015 since you guys have been to the final four, you know, what's the secret recipe to getting back to it? And it was like, boom. We have the SEC schedule. SEC is as strong as it's ever been. We have our pieces. We have guys that you physically can't take out of the gym. And I had, Sean, I had six different people around that program tell me this weekend, we cannot get these guys out of the gym. These are guys that you look out the window in our offices and you see Trey Mitchell playing three on three with Jordan Burks and Rob Dillingham. During the downtime at fantasy camp, when these guys are on the clock with you know pro camps with you know doing doing this camp participating for NIL 
they don't have to be doing basketball stuff. They, they can be relaxing, k- kicking their legs up in the recliners and the, uh, you know, Joe Craft offices and the, you know, the suite with the big TV. They can relax and eat snacks and chill while they cash checks. Like, they, there's no obligation for them to fulfill basketball requirements on top of what their work requirement is for the weekend. There were three, four, five different guys that every little tiny break that we had, you know, okay, we have two hours to spare here. They change into their workout gear and get shots up. Antonio Reeves getting shots up. Rob Dillingham getting shots up. Getting a trainer to go get individual one-on-one workouts. Going to the women's gym and getting individual workouts. This is a group that you physically cannot get them out of the gym. Uh, and that is, you know, it, it's the little things. It's 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 a the, the, the chemistry is there, the, the joy is there. You can physically see, tangibly see that joy with this group, but they also work their asses off. Like that is, that is such a, a necessary attribute of, the, of these guys and, and something that is going to pay off in, in the long run. You cannot take these guys out of the gym and, and the staff and, and random staffers, people around the program are like, like sometimes when you know, you know, and that's the vibe that they're giving off. Yeah, it is. And uh, those are some of Kentucky's best teams, the teams that live in the gym, the breakfast club teams, the the mornings, the, and I think we talked about that maybe a week or so ago. You asked me, what was I looking forward to the most between now and when we, or what am I looking for like on social media? And I mentioned, are they in the gym? Are we seeing Instagram stories? Are we getting Snapchat screenshots? Anything? Is it it 2 a.m.? Is it 5 a.m.? Is it midnight? you're hearing those same things. Guys are going to the gym, not just alone. They're going in groups. They're getting in there. The coaches are looking out the windows, like you said, and seeing their guys in there. Not only does that give these players confidence, but as a staff, when you look out those windows and seeing guys putting in work without you having to be there to hold their hand to do it or force them to do it, that goes a long way in building that connection, that chemistry, and that trust, not just amongst the players, but with the staff as well. And I think that that's why you're seeing all the energy and excitement around the staff and this team is everyone is on the same page. And that I'm telling you, that is half the battle. If you're on the same page and everybody has the same goal in mind, I think this team is going to end up being really good. We have a schedule now, non-conference that we have not got to talk about with some dates. There's a lot of reason to be excitement or excited about it. A couple quick notes um, from just being there, hearing things uh, around the program. Antonio Reeves, Sean, I want to put you on the spot. If if you well, you might have read my post, but if You're if you were to get me on the spot stuff, if you were to guess what Antonio Reeves is shooting and catch and shoot wide open looks on the gun right now from three, what do you, what would you say he's shooting? Seventy five percent. I read your work, of course I do, and he's a, he's a coin he's a coin flip. He's a, he's working his way to being a coin flip. You so, think I don't read your work? But it, it, it's not a, it, it's not about that. But it, the the <laughs> the the theme itself, yeah, seventy five percent in open catch and look, look shoot looks from from three, seventy five percent. And like I, the way it was worded to me was he's going to be pissed off if he's not a forty five percent plus yep. three point shooter this year. Like there's there and we talked about it. There is an effortless aspect of his shot where it's just like every time he launches it's like it's it's not even a mind thing anymore it's just every time he lifts for a shot it's there's an expectation on his end that it's going in Uh, and like 45 percent from three is the like that's that's his goal like that might even be like underselling what his expectations are this year dude wants to be a coin flip three-point shooter this year yep he's going to get plenty of opportunities as well. And this is what goes back to everything. I know we get repetitive on here this time of year, but I'm going to keep saying it. To me, it made so much sense for him to be on this team because he doesn't have to carry the load of just absolutely having to get Kentucky set up offensively and and being the one at times and what's Kentucky going to get into late. He is wired to score from the three-point line, and he gets shots off so quickly. I think that was the thing that stood out the most about him in Toronto. He's going to take, on average, eight threes a game. I fully believe that. He's going to shoot a lot of threes. He's going to hit a lot of threes. I think he's going to push to average about 20 points a game. And I would he, he, he would be my preseason pick. I don't think he'll get it in the preseason voting. But I'm willing to bet by the time February, March gets here and the dust settles in SEC play that Antonio Reeves will be in the conversation for SEC Player of the Year. 
another note, uh, Rob Dillingham, Cal said in his private meeting with us that he has gained 13 pounds wow. since leaving Toronto. Not because just, you know, organically, because he felt himself not being able to get to the spots that he was used to getting uh, in, in high school. He was uncomfortable with his inability to be himself. And he said, you know what, I'm not going to point fingers and say, you know, well, it'll be different. I'll, I'll get better. I'll figure it out by the time the season starts. He said, I'm going to put it upon myself to put on weight, add muscle right away. Like, I'm coming home and hitting the weight room. And he has added 13 pounds yep. since July. I mean, a month he's added 13 pounds and he looks apart. He looks good. He, you know, he was my coach all weekend. He was an awesome kid, unbelievable kid, uh, as kind as can be, but looks really good. You know, you have Antonio Reeves doing doing his thing. You know, being trying to be a coin flip three point shooter. He looks good. Rob Dillingham looks really good. Uh, it there's there's a lot of good juju going on right now. And and that was the benefit of going and playing those games, right? In July, we, we talked about it. It's It gives you a blueprint of where you are and where you need to be and where you want to be. And it gave a guy like Rob the chance to go out there and say, I need to get stronger. I need to get in the weight room. It's given these other guys an idea of, of where they slide and what they need to work on. That's the benefit of playing basketball in July is you get a look at your team, not to panic, but to say, okay, we've got four more months to be this version of what I need to be not just individually, but as a team. So that team went into that working together. And then the next four months to me is building individual talent and then coming back together again here in October, November, ready to roll and make a run at a, at a final four in a national championship. And uh, I mean, you're seeing Kentucky now, what, somewhere 15th, 16th in most of these preseason prediction, predictions and projections that are coming out. I like that spot for them. It's not too much of the spotlight. Kentucky is going to get plenty of chances to prove itself. It gets Kansas early in the season. That's one where Kentucky is going to be in a uh, primetime event in Chicago, Champions Classic. You'll find out where Kentucky is pretty quickly. Cats are looking good. And you know what makes me look good, Sean? Bird dogs make me look good. Their stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and get in leg, giving you a truly sculpted look, as you can see with the polo here. And I have the, the shorts on, but I, I'm not going to stand up and, uh, you know, Show, show show the goods. You, you guys can get the, get the picture. Uh, the bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. They fix the issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches, so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice mo movement. And they use anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Uh, it's the best stuff, and they have now changed. So we we've. We have now sold them out of two separate items. First, you had the tumbler, then you had uh, the, the 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 hat, and now it's a Bird Dogs Hydro Flask water bottle. Go to birddogs.com slash KSR or enter promo code KSR for a free Bird Dogs Hydro Flask water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash KSR or promo code KSR for a Bird Dogs Hydro Flask water bottle. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you, Sean Smith. Uh, also... Obviously, got to give a shout out to our uh, new friends at Game Time. They are the absolute best. The app that you will not want to put down once you get that thing rolling. I love the last minute, minute ticket deals. I love the ability to uh, get the flash sales. It is the absolute best you get to see from your seats. That is something that I wish other outlets did, but fortunately, I found a place that does do that for me. Sean, uh, in case people didn't listen to last last week's show, share your personal experience uh, with Game Time that was uh, so effortless for you. Yeah, going to the uh, Cincinnati Reds Chicago Cubs game this weekend for a buddy of mine's bachelor weekend and uh, use the game time app, purchase nine tickets, could see where our seats were quickly, efficiently. And, and another recommendation too, if you're if you're looking to get to Kroger Field this weekend for Kentucky season opener, you can if you wake up Saturday morning and want tickets, boom, get on the app. There it is. You like you said, those flash deals all the way up until kickoff. You can find seats available on the game time app. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Advanced. Game Time has t deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You will be able to get Kentucky Ball State tickets on Saturday. Wake up early, get those tickets. 
They will be available. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time Guarantee means you will always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game Time will credit you 110% of the dis- uh, difference. It's the fastest growing ticket app in the country for a reason. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download Game Time app, create an account, and use code KSR for twenty dollars off your purchase. Take terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code KSR for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are our listeners ready for the one and only point God Himself, Tyler Absolutely. Ulysses? Well, let's get out of here. Let, let's get out of here then, Sean. Where can fans find your work? You can follow me on social media at GBB Country. Find me on Twitter as well, or X, whatever it is. Uh, at Jack Pilgrim KSR, we also have a brand new KSR Twitter account. Make sure you go follow that. It's official, has the check mark, has the, the on three badge. You definitely need to go follow that. We're posting all of our good stuff there. Uh, you will not miss any of the action there. Um, while you're at it, go uh, subscribe to KSR Plus. There's new deals. Uh, we, we are posting new, new all, all the stuff that we have said on this show always go, gets put on KS board first. You will not miss anything uh, if you subscribe there. I promise you it's worth your time. We're doing question and answer sessions. All the good stuff that you're looking for uh, behind the scenes look at this program uh, unlike anything that you have seen before you do not want to miss it go to and subscribe to ksr plus let's go ahead and get out of here sean smith with our interview with tyler Ulysses. now happy to be joined by the point god himself tyler Ulysses. what's going on buddy how are you i'm good how are you guys we're good, man. We're really excited to have you on. I know you're a, a fan favorite, so Kentucky fans have been just dying to have you on and been asking. So uh, we we appreciate your time and, and you uh, to opportunity to open up a little bit about your time here, uh, your decision to to uh, join the coaching staff, how things are going right now. So uh, we definitely appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. Well, let's let's get started. Uh, just you know, how you feeling? Road to recovery. I know you went through a you know traumatic uh, life incident. Uh, just how how are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm a lot better. Uh, I'm walking around now. If you saw me last year on the bench, I had to remove my crutch every five minutes. But you know, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm healed up. My bones have healed, and you know, I'm just taking a day at a time, trying to help these guys out. Well, uh, if you don't mind, just do you mind sharing some of the, the just the story of what happened, uh, just how scary that was for you, kind of the immediate aftermath, and just kind of your journey to get to this point? Oh well, yeah, I guess I haven't really talked much about it. Well, um, what happened was a drunk driver. She came down the wrong side of the intersection. Um, she hit me head on. I don't remember the accident. Uh, you know, I broke a lot of bones in my foot, my tibia, fibia, shattered my ankle broke both my wrists and you know at this point you know it's been a year and a half I still have a limp uh but like I said I'm feeling a lot better uh that pain's in the past you know I'm just trying to push forward um you know keep working out every day uh doing my therapy taking it a day at a time and you know just trying to you know graduate and make sure I get my degree and Tyler and and going through that and and working your way back how has it helped being around your family at Kentucky and in a place where you spent a lot of time and people you're very familiar with, with that have been there for you coming out of high school into college. How has it helped being in that family environment? Um, I think it's the best thing for me because I'm here learning and, you know, I'm not just somewhere uh, thinking on it and harping on it all day. I can help these guys out, have responsibilities. Um, I'm around the game every day and, you know, I'm enjoying myself, especially being at UK, being in Rupp is amazing. Uh, you know, we played, it's been seven years now since we played. So, you know, just being back is a lot of fun, uh, getting the love from the fans. And, you know, I'm enjoying myself. I feel like if I was somewhere else, I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. We'll talk about your coaching in a second, but that incident happened while you were still uh, clearly wanting to get back into the playing grind and uh, you still have aspirations of playing. Just just kind of talk about that, uh, your playing future, what that entails, and just what kind of your, your goals are for, for that. Uh, well, you know, obviously I want to play because, you know, that's what I do. But it was a traumatic injury. So um, I'm really not super focused on that right now. Uh, my main goal is to, like I said, get my degree uh, because the rehab is it, just a long process. It's a day by day thing. And, you know, if it works out for me, great. Um, I think it will. You know, I think I have the potential to get back and to get back healthy. Um, I'm not sure what that looks like yet. But, you know, as of now, I'm just trying not to think about it too much. 
because honestly, before that I was injured. Um, the accident happened like three days after I started playing again. So, you know, it's, it's kind of nothing new for me. Um, it was definitely a, a lot more traumatic, but, you know, I've been through it. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, stay positive, take it a day at a time. Had the doctors told you what uh, a full full strength recovery looks like, you know, at a timeline where you could be able to uh, get back on the court, do five on five, at least get, you know, some pickup runs in with the, the current group? Um, so because of the injuries I have, it's, it's just not that easy to point out. Uh, the doctor's main goal was to get me to walk correctly again. Um, and we're still not at that point. So, you know, like I said, I'm just taking it day by day. Uh, I'm progressing. Now I'm on my feet, moving around a lot more. Uh, hopefully can start jogging here soon and, you know, just keep it going, keep pushing. Uh, the doctor, like I say, he, he's not even thinking about basketball. He just wants me to, you know, be able to walk and live a normal life at this point. And Tyler, you're transitioning into the, the coaching topic here. You, you've been with the staff. You've been with a couple of teams now. What does – your daily duties kind of look like within this program? What are some things that you're responsible for in that role? Um, so actually, Cal doesn't put a whole lot of responsibility on me. Uh, these coaches do a lot. They do a great job um, preparing these guys. I can't believe they honestly work as hard as they do. Uh, the hours they work is insane, you know, because I'm still a full-time student. I'm taking five classes, but, you know, things I've done is, like, last year I helped Casey a lot with film. This year I watched film with the point guards, um, being in the gym with these guys when they want to get shots up. Uh, you know, just telling them things I see, uh, telling Coach Cal things I see, you know, just being vocal and, you know, just trying to help out any way I can. Uh, there's not anything specific that I do. Um, you know, I just try to, you know, give my expertise and, you know, show them what I've done or, you know, how to do certain things. Cal's been outspoken about it just while you were here, said that you're a uh, an extension of the coaching staff while you were a player. Uh, just what has that transition been like to you know be from the seeing it from the player side of uh, things and now uh, as a coach and, and trying to you know relay that message to the players and then specifically the guards? Uh, I mean, it's different obviously because uh, I can do it myself. So you know now as a coach, you just have to figure out a way how to reach these kids and. You know, you coach everyone differently. And, you know, for me, it's kind of, you know, it, it's not really far-fetched because it's the same as being a point guard on the floor. You you got to deal with different personalities, deal with different guys, and, you know, you got to talk to – you guys hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay, I talk to Scal and guys different than I would talk to Devin or Jamal. You know, I feel like in coaching, it, it's the same. You just, you know, have to figure it out. And like I said, it's different because, you know, I can't actually go out there and make the play. How important do you think it is that out of all the coaches on the staff, yeah, they've coached here, but they haven't played here. You have played here. So you're you're able to relate to what these guys are going through. How important do you think that is for you to be able to make that connection with these guys and say, look, I've been here. I've done this. I know what it takes. How, how important do you think that is? Um, I think it's extremely important because, you know, these guys respect me and they're great players who want to make it to the next level. And like you said, I've been through it um, in Kentucky. I've, I've gone through ups and downs in the NBA. Um, I've had highs. I've had lows. So, you know, I feel like I'm a, a great person to learn from and just, you know, be completely honest with them about the game and about, you know, how this is a business. It gets to a point and, you know, they should just enjoy their time, uh, have fun with the game, listen to coach. And, you know, just enjoy the process. Don't don't rush it. You know, these guys are 18 years old. And, you know, all, all they can think about is the NBA, the NBA, basketball, basketball. You know, just, you know, enjoy the moment, live in the moment, and, you know, not stress everything. You know, just play ball, have fun, and, you know, just keep grinding. You, you know point guard play more than anybody out there. What have you seen about the with from those guys in particular, Rob, DJ, Reed even, uh, and, you know, just what, what's their transition been like and, and what, what you've seen so far? I mean, uh, they're all different and they're all really good players. Uh, they're all skilled. They're, we just have a bunch of basketball players, honestly, uh, guys who can break people down, can make plays as well as shoot the ball, um, pass the ball. So, you know, I'm excited. Uh, these are good guards. I'm excited to, you know, add some things to their game, uh, show them a few things that, you know, I see. And, you know, I feel like the sky's the limit for all of them. And, you know, like, I, I'm extremely excited for this year. Tyler, we, John Calipari went on SportsCenter today and, and had a 10-minute segment. And he talked – he used a term that has been thrown out there a lot this summer, random basketball, and the ability to play random. 
Talk a little bit about that and, and what are some things and some benefits to being able to do that? Because we saw that we saw this team do that for four games in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- that's what the NBA is going to, you know, random basketball, positionless basketball. And, you know, when you add guys in like Trey, who's shooting threes at a 40 percent clip. Uh, you got Justin, who's six, eight, who can, you know, play any position on the court. And, you know, it goes back to us just being basketball players like anyone can make a play. Anyone can get in the lane. Anyone can knock the shot down. You know, we have so many options and, you know, so much depth. You know, it's hard not to have fun with this team. Uh, Like you said, in Toronto, we barely even put anything in. You know, we had a few plays. Defensively, we didn't put anything in, but they they rotated. They helped each other out. They they saved each other's back. And, you know, it was fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of. And, you know, I can't say it enough. Like, I'm extremely excited to see how this goes Um, because we're deep. Like I said, we have a lot of players and, you know, they're skilled. How much of that takes kind of thinking out of it too? With your, if you're running a bunch of sets early, you're, you're having to think and be in the right spots. But with playing random, you're you're in space and you're just making plays off of what the defense is giving you. How much of that takes some pressure off a young team being in that environment, being able to play that way? I think for you know any team, any basketball player, uh, me personally as well. Like if you're not overthinking, you're you're just playing. So you're reacting off your instincts and you're just playing ball. You're just having fun, just you know making reads, making plays. And I feel like that helps any young guy, especially in a new system, uh, that Cal is giving them the freedom to to be themselves, to make mistakes and, you know, learn through those things and, you know, just play basketball, be a basketball player. Uh, you don't want to put players in a box. Obviously, you're not going to be able to do the things you can do that you did in high school because you're playing with other great players. But, you know, when you give guys the freedom to go and the space to go and, you know, they're actually players, you know, then the, the game is – less on the coaches and, you know, more so on the players and, and they do their thing and make it happen. Cal's talked a lot about just how close this group is and the, the cohesiveness. And uh, I mean, you could see it on the court, just the, the on-court chemistry, but I mean, just being around them this weekend at fantasy camp, there's just a, a connection with these guys that just feels different. What, what do you think that is? What, why do you think that they are as close uh, as they are just this early? Um, I feel like, you know, last year's team, they, th- those guys got along as well. But uh, this year is different because they're all young guys. So, you know, when you have seniors coming in, transferring, when you have, you know, people who have been there for three or four years, uh, they look at things different. So, you know, these kids are literally just here. They just, they just came to Kentucky. They want to play basketball. They literally run around the gym all day. I tell them my age, you, you don't even want to look at the gym. So, you know. It's just it's just fun. They just they just enjoy it. They enjoy being here, getting better, uh, and they just really want it. They want it bad. They want to win, and they want to make it to the next level. You mentioned that you all didn't have a ton of things in offensively in Toronto, and and there was a lot of talk about shot charts that week and where shots were coming from. How much of that tower is different personnel, and then how much it of it is maybe an, an effort from the coaching staff to say, hey, here here's where we want shots to be taken from. Was it a combination of the two, or was it more one than the other? Um, I we we really didn't uh, have a problem. I don't believe with uh, the shots we were taking that I've heard of. Um, me personally, I don't I don't go off that. I kind of go off the eye test, and um, I feel like those guys were playing good basketball. Um, they took open shots. They they shared the ball, and you know we we got out of there with winning most of the games by twenty uh, or more. And you know it's just we build from here. Like they were literally fresh. <laughs> out of high school, you know, you can't ask them to be perfect. And, you know, they almost were, uh, you know, for me, like I said, I'm just excited to see how this plays out. I'm excited to see these players grow. And, you know, once I feel like, you know, we, we get around here, you know, get a few practices, uh, they'll understand where they get their shots in the offense, uh, when they're going to get their shots and, you know, how to play off each other. And to clear that up, there there were there were no negative comments about the shot okay, chart. Yeah. They were it was okay. all positive. It was from the three point line and at the rim. Just I think it was an exciting style of play that people got to see on paper on a shot chart. And I think that that you mentioned the eye test. I mean, it, it passed. Yeah, it's be, like you know, like I said, we have basketball players. So you know, even when they try to shrink the court and things they usually do in the past, um, we have shooters as well as guys who get in the lane. And, you know, I feel like they all can do it. We don't have anyone who just, I feel like, can't shoot or can't get in the lane and make a play. Um, you know, it's just a uh, you know, group of guys. Uh, they put it together really well. Um, I think Trey's a big piece for us, being able to space the floor. And, you know, I feel like, like I said, the sky's the limit. Uh, obviously, it's college basketball. They have to be ready. It's going to be physical. Um, the SEC's tough. 
But um, I think, you know, we have a shot to be really good and, and do some special things. Was there a player with so many new new faces? Was there a player or, um, you know, position group that kind of shocked you or, or you know, did something that, that turned your head when all the new faces arrived and you were like, whoa, I didn't I didn't know this was going to be that or, you know, any individual surprises that you had on this roster? Um, Reed surprised me how good he was really early. Not so much surprised me because he's a, a McDonald's All-American, but um, Reed has been really good uh, all year. Um, but the biggest surprise for me was Trey because I, I've never seen him play. Uh, he transferred in, and the hype was around all the guys we had coming in, the guys coming back. And uh, Trey, I feel like, just, just made things just gel and mesh really well. Uh, like I said, with his space on the floor, with his reads, uh, he just plays the game really smart. And, you know, he's a really good player. What about his ability to pass the ball? Was that something yeah. that stood out, you, out, out to you at that spot? Yeah, making the read. Like I said, making reads. Uh, we could Like, he's a guy you could play through. So, you know, that, that really surprised me. And, uh, you know, I, that's going to be great for us, uh, having a five man. I don't think we've had that here ever, honestly. Uh, Carl could have shot in threes, but he didn't. So, you know, this year having this guy who's spacing the floor, you got to bring these bigs out of the paint. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, you, you brought it up, Carl, and let's go down memory lane, lane a little bit. Just talk about your decision to sign with Kentucky, the, the you know, Calipari ramping things up. I know you told me in the past Kenny Payne was kind of the, the initiator of that, but then uh, talk to me about Cal ramping things up, your decision to sign with Kentucky, and uh, just, just a little bit from there. So honestly with me, there wasn't even uh, a time to ramp up. It was just as soon as I got the phone call, I came to visit when they allowed me to visit and committed. Like, I was just, you know, I never thought twice about it because uh, obviously me and Devin were a uh, package deal coming into college. Uh, so that helped me out a lot. And, you know, I just wanted to be in the best possible position to, you know, showcase my talents. And I feel like no better place than, you know, Kentucky. This is the mecca of college basketball in my eyes. And, um, you know, at the time, it definitely, like, was the place to come if you wanted to go to NBA. So, you know, I feel like if I come here, you either you sink or you swim, you know. So, you know, I came here to, you know, prove what I did. And I, I feel like I did, you know, pretty well. Cal gave me the keys to do what I wanted to do. And, you know, the sky was limp. Is there a moment that stands out to you from, from those two years that you just kind of replay in your mind, a, a good moment from those two seasons that you played? Um, there was I, – I, it was great times. You know, they were both different years. The first year, uh, we played 20 minutes a game, and we went 38 and won. Uh, winning 38 games is crazy. And, you know, the next year, watching Jamal do the things he was doing, like, was insane to see. And, you know, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, different years, but, you know, I enjoy both. And, you know, I, I love being here and wouldn't change it for the world. What was the one game that, that kind of just, like you said, like Sean said, that you play, re, replay in your mind and you, you know the exact numbers, you know the exact stats, you know what you shot. Uh, was there one game in particular that you're like, man, that, that, was, that was my moment? Uh, I think my mo – I know, I know my stats for most of my games, but <laughs> I, think, I think my moment was uh, the, the first Louisville game because coming here at the beginning, it was, you know, I was too small. Uh, I'm going to be here four years. He's not going to play and things like that. So I feel like uh, the Bahamas, people started to like me. But the Louisville game, it was more so like uh, that's when everyone fell in love with me with the bloody eye. And obviously that was like uh, my career high that year. And being the rival game, it just was big for me. And uh, I, helped, I feel like it helped solidify me uh, here as a Wildcat. There's a ton of talk we know about La Familia and things. But what is that like in the league? Like how often do you – do former Kentucky players communicate with one another? How, how often do you stay in touch with some of those guys that you did play with during those two years? Um, it's, it's really like that. Like, it, it's really a family because, um, like, I just saw Anthony Davis, and I haven't seen him in years. And, you know, it was all smiles and hugs. DeMarcus is a guy I talked to. Uh, and I got drafted to a team with Devin, Brandon Knight, uh, Eric Bledsoe, Archie Goodwin. So, you know, we hang out. They help us through things. Um, and even when I was in the pros, I was talking to – Quade Green, Ashton Hagens, Brandon Boston, uh, and all these guys. And uh, I feel like it's just a family. We understand we've all been through the same thing. And we're looking forward to each other, seeing each other in the NBA, uh, competing, and, and, you know, just talking about those memories. You talked about being a package deal with Devin. And just what was it about that history? Why why, why did you and Devin just get so close? And, um, you know, what, what's your relationship with him like right now? 
Um, we got close because so we met in like seventh or eighth grade at a camp. Um, we were on the same team, and obviously I'm a passer. He's a shooter, and you know we just we jail really well. And off the court, we jail. We're kind of the same person off the court, and um, you know it just clicked. So I don't know how, but every time after that, we went to a camp. We were on the same team. So whoever put that together, great job. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, we took a few visits together and just decided we wanted to play with each other. Uh, and it made sense. And luckily, I got drafted to the team with my best friend, uh, played two years with him. Uh, you know, it, it was amazing. And we're still close to this day. Um, he's living a life I'm proud of him. Uh, he's the best two guard in the NBA, uh, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people, even I feel like Kentucky fans, didn't know how good he was. And um, I always knew. And I, I'm happy to see he's, he's finally showing everyone uh, what he can do. Uh, even though they snub him all the time for for all star yeah. votes and things like that, but you know I, I feel like he's doing really well on the court, off the court, and you know we're proud of. Him. Ty- Tyler Thompson asked about uh, the story of you making breakfast for him. What what, what was that like? And uh, the, uh, the the pancakes. What 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 type of pancakes were they? <laughs> um, I really honestly don't remember that, but I'm, I'm sure that's what I do. You know, I've been cooking pancakes since I was about cooking full breakfast since I was like six years old. So yeah, you know, I had my my mom had my skillet in the lodge, and I, you know, if I made myself breakfast, I might you know get him a little something. I'm not gonna leave my boy out. <laughs> <laughs> they say I have the best pancakes. That's what most people say. I love it, um, Sean, Sean. You got anything else? I'm gonna go to. Uh, I have a whole list of questions from from fans that they they asked you, Sean. You have anything else you want to ask? No, get to the fan questions. Cool. I'll uh, uh, run through some of them. Um, we talked about you playing professionally, uh, what, what your next goal is there. Oh, this is a good one from Peppa Penn. If UK wanted to keep you as a coach and made a good offer, would you take it rather than pursuing uh, playing professionally again? And would you ever become a head co- UK head coach if offered? Uh, one more time. Could you ask one more time? Sorry. <laughs> if UK... <laughs> If UK wanted to keep you as a coach, made a good offer, would you take it instead of pursuing professional basketball again? And would you ever become the head coach if they offered? Um, honestly, that's a that's a thought, you know, um, because I'm enjoying this. This is really fun for me. Uh, seeing guys like seeing Kaysen make it, seeing Chris make it, Oscar, it's just fun because you know we saw what they go through, and you know we were able to you know help them in some type of way. Um, so obviously, I would definitely would be open to that. And, of course, I would love to be a U.K. head coach one day, you know, if offered to me. Uh, Charlie Keown asks, what are your thoughts on the new landscape of college basketball transfers, NIL, COVID years, uh, and how difficult has it been to adapt to these changes? Um, well, I never knew anything different. So my first year coaching, this is what's going on. Uh, you know, you know, to me, it is what it is. You know, if you're going to let guys transfer, those guys have to understand that if you transfer, uh, you might not get picked up. Um, you know, I feel like it hurts some people. It's good for some people. You know, it, it just depends on who's who. Uh, but I love that the guys are, are making money and, you know, can take care of themselves and their family. Um, I feel like that that's well-deserved and, you know, it, it's great. I feel like you would have made a fortune with NIL. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you ever, like, wish that you could go back in time and be like, you know, can I get can I get reimbursed for my missed opportunities? Like, I, I, feel, I feel like you, you're owed just retroactively. Um, no, we have fun. You know, we have fun with the grind. I was, I'm not going to say I wouldn't want <laughs> to make money <laughs> while I was in school. But, but like, you know, going back and, you know, we had fun. We had a great time in school. Uh, what we went through is what we went through. Um, Devin had a brand-new car back then anyway. So, you know, we had a great time on campus not having all that money. I think it, it built character. And, you know, these guys is different. You know, they're, they're still in the gym. It doesn't affect them. And I, I feel like it's just great for them. I don't look at it as just, oh, I wish – we could have did it or, you know, butthurt about it or anything. Um, it's great for them to see them, you know, being able to drive cars and things like that. And like I said, take care of their family uh, because, you know, we, we, <laughs> we struggle when you're in college, you know, you don't have, you don't have much uh, to, to live off of just, you know, the meals they give us. And, you know, now that these guys can, you know, do certain things for themselves, it's great. Uh, Ghost of Pete Gillen says, what do you think of Rob, uh, DJ, and Reed? Uh, respectfully, what do they need to do or improve on to reach their full potential? Um, they're all great players. They're all skilled players. Uh, like I said earlier, they're different. Um, 
they what they need to do is what they're doing now. They're always in the gym. They're gym rats. You know, Rob at one time shot a couple thousand shots in in a week. Uh, so you know, these guys are in the gym. They're they're getting things done. Um, they want to work. They're listening. They're asking questions. So you know, they just need to keep up the good work. Uh, I have no like negatives for these guys at this point. Like seeing that what we saw in Canada is just you know amazing. Re blocking, you know, three point shots and things like that. You know, it's just great to see. You know, it's a learning curve to play with each other, to share minutes and things like that that they have to get used to. But you know, I feel like that's easy when you have uh, great players who are willing. This one's this one's brutal. So just just bear with me. B hoop thirty three. I'd love to know his thoughts on how the Wisconsin game played out. What could have been done differently in his mind? I'm not sure there's a way uh, to word that politely without offending him or making him uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, well, well, for me, I, I finally watched the game when um, when I was on bed rest after the car accident, and what I my main thing is the shot clock violation and uh, a few bell calls late. Uh, on the other end, when they made a shot, I think it was Nigel Hayes made a shot. It should have been a shot clock violation. There were questionable calls late. Um, I think coach went with you know guys who took them to the championship a year before. It came down to a few possessions and. You know, it, it just didn't work out in our favor. You know, those guys played really well. Sam Decker, Kaminsky, uh, they played a great game. I wish, you know, we could have gotten that. But, you know, it, it didn't work out. They, they had a good game, uh, and they came out with the win. Just being a part of that, talk me through that emotion. Like, what, what, what did it feel like to be that close and just, like, yet so far? Yeah, I mean, it hurt. Obviously, it hurt really bad, especially, you know, watching it, you know, watching it unfold and, you know, not being a part of it, it, it definitely hurt. But, you know, that I guess that's just not what it was supposed to – the story, how the story was supposed to go, you know. 38-0, no, you, know, you can't beat it. 38-1, um, it, it hurt my soul. But, you know, we just we just got to move on. <laughs> it's all it's going to hurt forever for sure. This one doesn't hurt. Steel Cat eighty nine. Ask him what he knows about QP or Happy Days, Happy Daz in Lima. <laughs> yeah, he don't. He must be from Lima. Yeah, QP. Lima. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Um, oh, this is a good one. A, a prior ninety four. I need back score backstory on when you and that seven footer from Auburn got into it in the SEC tournament. Um, I I don't fully remember but I think I was just was kind of like walking and he kind of like maybe shoved me or something and I just shoved him back you know just a quick little you know <laughs> bump <laughs> nothing nothing too serious you know Bruce Pearl was on the sideline clapping up it was actually a pretty live moment uh, it was fun for me but you know there's no back down here and you know that that's just how that went <laughs> where, where did that come from for you that just the uh... I, I, you know, no matter the size, I, I'm, you know, you're going to get the best version of me. You're going to get that toughness. Just where, where did that come from? Um, you know, like the, the question before it said, that comes from those those QP burgers out in, <laughs> in, in Lima, Ohio. You know, Lima is a city that, you know, I feel like we just, it's a rough city. So, you know, we just all, we, we breed, you know, dogs. And, you know, growing up with my friends, we were always competitors. We always wanted to play defense. You know, most guys just want to play offense. But, you know, I grew up under the guy, Travis Walton, who, you know, I looked up to a defensive player year at Michigan State, um, and, and we just always competed, you know, uh, played football with these guys, learning how to hit, learning how to get hit. Uh, you know, we just grew up outside playing ball and, you know, getting after it. Sean, I know you had a couple more questions to, to jump in there. Uh, yeah, I just uh, – you know what special Kentucky teams look like, Tyler. We, we just talked about one, 38-1, and, and then the year after that was a good team as well. What does this team have? Does it have some of those qualities that you've seen this summer that, that would make them a special team? And, and if so, what are those things? Um, yeah, I, I believe so. The thing is, you know, like I can't say enough basketball players. They're just hoopers, pure hoopers, all of them, and they love the game. Uh, how me and Devin and those guys were in the gym, me and Zay, me and Jamal were in the gym at the nights these guys are doing. Uh, they're always in here. They always want to be, get better. Uh they're scared to fail. They're scared not to make it. And, you know, I feel like that's what, you know, shows that they want to be great. So, you know, they have the opportunity to be great. And, you know, they're skilled guys and we have depth. And, you know, like I keep saying, it's going to be fun to watch, fun to see Unrival. And, you know, I'm just excited to, you know, be a part of this and, and help these guys out. 
And the last one I have for you here, uh, you mentioned earlier that you've got to see firsthand just how hard these coaches work. And, and maybe as a player, you don't see that, but when you, in this role, you see it all. What are some things that you are seeing from John Calipari? Is there anything that you've seen different from 2014, 2015 that you're seeing now? Because to me this summer, he, he was feeling himself. He seems rejuvenated. He seems like he's ready to roll with this team. Are you seeing and sensing that same positive energy around him too? I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like any coach would be feeling good about this, you know. Um, but I feel like just for me, it's surprising how much he loves it. Like he, he really loves it, you know, being up close and, you know, how hard they all work at it. And, you know, he puts his all into this. He wakes up excited about it, uh, goes to sleep thinking about it, can't sleep thinking about it. And, you know, it's just great to see because he's done it for so long. Um, I don't, you know, I've played for a long time. I don't think when I'm his age I want to <laughs> still play. I'll probably never step in the gym again. And, you know, he's still doing it. He's still loving it. And, you know, he gives it his all. And, you know, it's great to see. Uh, he's a great person to learn from. And, you know, in my eyes, he, he kind of, you know, he, he's built what's going on now in today's game with, you know, the one and dones and getting guys to the NBA early, making their dreams come true and, you know, other things. And, you know, I feel like he's the the best college coach to come through college basketball. Uh, he's about his players, all about his players. He, you see, he let me come back and do this. You know, that that's that's my guy. Y'all got to We got to stop being so hard on my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so Tyler, as far as your individual playing career is concerned, uh, there's a debate. Obviously, best ever point guard in Kentucky basketball history. It, people like John Wall, people like Kyle Macy, people like Ray John Rondo. That there, there's a conversation, but every conversation you are in it, no matter no, no matter what. What does it mean to be in that conversation? I know you know. I personally think that you're the you're the best at the top of your game, but. What does it mean in a in such a historic program that you are in that conversation? I mean, it means everything because especially because my my pro career was short lived. Um, I only got to play two years, and then injuries just you know kept coming and coming. So, you know, it means everything because this is you know like you said, John Wall, Brandon Knight, Eric Bledsoe, uh, Jamal Murray, Isaiah, all these guys that came through, and you know to be in that conversation with them, it will always amaze be amazing for me. Um, because I didn't get to, you know, prove myself at the the next level, the the way I wanted to, and you know, like I said, it's, it's great, and you know, I'm happy that I came here, and I'm happy that I, I left that mark on this school. Where, where do you feel that you you belong on that list? I mean, I'm gonna say number one for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I I wouldn't like because you know, college is different than the pros. So you know, as a college player, I, I would definitely say number one, and you know, I, I honestly wouldn't say anyone's better than me. <laughs> What made you special? Like, what what was that that it factor with you that uh, just kind of you know where, where you were able to overcome whatever odds, whatever people said about you? What, what was that in, that one thing about you that that it factor? Um, I think it was my my, my confidence. Obviously, my God given talent. Uh, God blessed me. Like I, like I, I've been playing the same way since I was a child, six seven years old. Um, so obviously, I was blessed, and you know, but. My confidence and just my work ethic. Uh, I feel like me and Devin, that's another thing that helped us jail because, you know, our confidence, our work ethic. And I, I feel like that's why he's thriving now because of how confident he is. You know, if I didn't think I was better than, you know, these guys, then, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. And, you know, he thinks he's better than Michael Jordan, literally, you know. And, you know, it's crazy to say, but in all reality, you have to have that mindset and, you know, it's going to take you far places. I know Devin's a cop out answer. Jamal's a cop out answer. Besides those two, who is the most talented player you've ever played with? Man, I mean, uh, Devin, Jamal. Oh, I played on the Warriors for a little while. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> so I played with KD, Steph, Clay. Uh, so well, yeah, I played with a lot of great players. Uh, that, that, but but in college, uh, you, you got me say, there. In college, I would say, uh, you know, Carl. Uh, because he was the the go to guy on our on our first team. Who do you think is the the most underrated player that you played with at Kentucky? So, somebody that just didn't get the love that you think deserve they deserve. Um. Well, Devin, while he was here, but I would say Briscoe, um, because he was so good with the ball, and and me having the ball for so long of the game and so many possessions, uh, kind of put him out of position. 
And I feel like if he came here and I was out of the way, uh, you guys would have seen a, a completely different version of him. And, you know, I feel like he he took it upon himself to, you know, and, um, you know, he did it to perfection. He was a scoring point guard at high school who never played defense. And he came here and became the lockdown guy, uh, the junk guy, and getting in the paint and, you know, just doing what we needed him to do as, a, you know, a team. When in reality, he's an amazing player. He could have went anywhere else and probably, you know, led the country and <laughs> points, assists, you know. Last one from me in particular. Um, best memory as a Wildcat off the floor? Something that, something that didn't happen in a game, you know, hanging out with your friends, hanging out with uh, your, your teammates. What, what was the one memory that when you look back at your time as a player that you go, man, th that's, that, that's what was being a Wildcat was all about? Uh, well, we have a, I have a lot of memories, but um, I would say my second year that um, we would go uh, EJ EJ Florio, uh, he would have us all at his house. I think it was like every Tuesday we would go over and play games and you know just have fun and, and as a team, all of us like you know ten fifteen of us in one room having fun um, and just you know vibing out as a team. I love it, man. Tyler, that's all I have, Sean. You, you good? Yeah. No, cool, yeah, he's, he's got he's got me wanting to try these pancakes though, since he was uh, <laughs> hopping them up there. <laughs> That'd be a good like YouTube segment or something. We we need to get you on and then just ha have you make uh, pancakes for the class. That'd be dope. Yeah, I might uh, drop one one day. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, man, we appreciate you. You're, you're the best to ever do it, and uh, uh, we, we wish you success in your playing career. Get back on the floor, do what you do best, and. Uh, uh, if that, you know, whenever your time done is done there, make sure you uh, get back to Kentucky and keep that coaching up because uh, we, we love to have you around here. I'd love to be here. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.